everybody, this is Mike with the One Stop Co-op Shop, and today I'm coming back to Dark Souls because they redid the rules, and I want to see if I like them better than the somewhat meh response I had to them originally. So I'm going to do a partial true solo of playthrough, and then at the end I'll give you some thoughts, and as I play through I'll explain what some of the rules changes that I recognize at least are. A disclaimer that they sent me a review copy of the Sunless City new expansion to try this out. And if you like the content on the One Stop Co-op Shop, consider supporting us through Patreon. You get early access to our videos and exclusive videos every month you can't see anywhere else. You can also listen to our podcast for reviews and design discussions. Or come and say hi and join the conversation on our Discord. So first of all, if you're not familiar with the From Software Dark Souls video game IP, it's, well, geez, I was going to call it a Souls-like, but of course it's a Souls-like. It's the game that, <laughs> well, Demon Souls and Dark Souls are the games that gave Souls-like its name. But yeah, it's a sort of a, you explore around, you, you fight things, you get souls, you level up, you fight harder and harder things, you try to like discover where to go and fight bosses and eventually win, I guess. So in this one, you are going through several encounters controlled by these cards where you will fight in dice-based combat on these little boards and if you get far enough, you'll fight a mini boss. And then if you get farther still, you will fight a big boss. And if you defeat them, then you win. And you have a certain number of deaths, basically, called sparks to do that in. All of the stuff I just said is basically identical to what was in the original game. But the structure is somewhat different. In the original release of the game, you would actually have like tiles put together. Now they control that through cards. You don't need as much uh, table space, which I certainly appreciate. And yeah, the combat is on these uh, boards. You have these nodes, so all movement is relative to the nodes. You can go uh, adjacent in any of the cardinal, I think they're called, directions. And you'll be using armor to defend, weapons to attack. They have different statistical requirements. And those statistics are the main thing you'll level up in addition to getting equipment. As you fight, you'll be spending stamina and you'll be taking damage. And if this bar ever fills up and you take another damage, then you're defeated. And that's kind of the basic cycle of the game. So I'm going to play through some battles and show you how that all works. And again, at least as far as I can remember, and I've like looked at my old playthrough video for the original version of the rules and looked at some Reddit threads, I'm going to uh, call out things that have changed in this new version. And at the end of the video, I'll tell you what I think about them. So I'm doing a true solo playthrough with the Pyromancer, who's a Pyromancer. <laughs> it's not very useful, is it? <laughs> they can do uh, magic, uh, flame magic. So uh, for this character, I start with a shield, a Pyromancy flame, and a hand axe. So I've actually got three things that can be held in a single one of my two hands. And at the start of each of my turns, I can swap which of them I'm using. So I could, for example, have both the Hand Axe and the Pyromancy Flame, and I could do a double attack, or I could uh, switch to melee instead of magic. Uh, or the shield, though, of course, is going to help me defend, so that's kind of my basic loadout right now. I also have an Estus Flask, which is healing. I have a Luck Token. Let me reroll a die once per dungeon delve. And I've got this that lets me activate my hero power to do a more powerful magical attack. This is the aggro token, which I just realized we don't need at all because we're playing true solo. <laughs> in the multiplayer game, you would pass this back and forth between players both to show whose turn it was and also to uh, direct enemy aggro. All right, we're going to start our adventure with a level one encounter. We're going to have three of those and then a level two, and then we can fight the mini boss, the Titanite Demon. Once we defeat him, he'll become a new fireplace or Firelink Shrine, Bonfire, that's what it's called, Bonfire. <laughs> It'll become a new bonfire that we can start from. But we'll probably go through this train of encounters multiple times until we've uh, leveled up enough to actually beat that guy. So in the old version, I think there were just rooms with enemies. And then, no, I think they had like terrain and stuff too. So this isn't like entirely different, but they do have like special rules for the rooms and different like objectives, which I don't think the old version had. And you also get to draw two and pick one. So you have a bit more control. Now, the main thing I'm looking at is how many souls can I get? So broken passageway, I have to survive for player count plus two turns. That'll be three turns. And there's gonna be two enemies at the start a hollow with a sword and a hollow with a crossbow. And then when the timer reaches two, after I've taken two turns, I'll respawn both of those. So realistically, I can kill three guys and I'm gonna get one soul per enemy killed. And then here it's number of players plus one soul. If, oh man, there's three enemies here, oh, but there's a treasure. Okay, and reduce the notes and few people can fit on the node because it's a dark alleyway. 
So this one will get me more consistent souls and should probably actually damage me less because that Silver Knight guy can be pretty nasty. Um, oh, and I get a treasure each time that I beat this. Okay, so yeah, this is definitely the one I'm going to do. So get out of here, Dark Alleyway. So this tells me how to set it up. I'm going to just have one tile. Sometimes you'll have two or even three. And then I'm going to randomly pick a tile and randomly orient it. I'm going to be able to start on one of the top three places by a doorway. And then I'm going to put out the enemies and terrain here. And I'll get to the special rules again in a second. So the single sword is a hollow swordsman and the cross sword is a hollow archer. Hollow being like basically zombie kind of undead people that have had their souls sucked away. I'll move both their cards over so you can see what they're doing. But let's not worry about that until they actually activate. Then we also have some terrain. I've got, it's a boar <laughs> on the, God, it's really hard to see the like kind of asterisk sun symbol. This guy's going to be moving after each of my turns towards me. And if he gets me, then he'll like push me and stagger me. And then there's also a gravestone, which in the video game, you can like uh, see messages people have left, not on gravestone specifically, this, but like in the game. So this is supposed to be like a hint somebody's given me. If I can get over there and use an action on it, then I can look at the top card of one of the decks and then uh, get rid of that card if I so choose. And I have to survive for three turns, and then I'll get one soul per enemy killed, I'll get to draw a treasure card and an event, which tend to be helpful, and I'm gonna respawn enemies when the timer reaches two. Besides that, we're ready to set up, I just gotta pick my starting spot. This dude's gonna charge up to one space and then attack in the same node as him, up to three people can fit in a given node. So I'll certainly start over here so I don't get stabbed by him because the enemies always take the first turn. All right, and yep, we are going to activate the enemies. They activate in their threat value order, so the hollow soldier before the crossbow hollow. And just to walk you through what they're doing. So this is a movement, and this is an attack. They go from left to right, so he's going to move and then try to attack. He's got only one heart, but he has one physical defense and one magic defense. So basically, if I can do an attack that does at least two damage, he'll be defeated. He has zero range, so he has to be on the same node as me. He has a one dodge difficulty. So depending on your armor, you'll roll some dodge dice every time you're attacked, and you might just ignore the attack completely. But yeah, right now he's going to move one forward uh, towards, and this means the closest unit, uh, the closest hero. Now, I'm the only one in the game, so that's not going to matter much. So yeah, he's moving one towards me. And then if he had reached me, he would have been able to attack for four melee or physical damage, again, toward the closest person. But he didn't reach me, so that's his activation. Uh, that's a lot of info. It'll be a lot simpler next time. The crossbow hollow, on the other hand, also has one life has one physical defense, but no magic defense, which is good for me because I've got fire. Uh, he's also got one dodge difficulty. He has infinite range because he's got a crossbow. He tries to move away from the person who has the aggro token, which again is going to always be me. So he has to increase the distance if possible. And then he's going to attack with three magical attack, also towards the person with the aggro. So here uh, he could go there or there or there. I get to pick. I'm gonna have him go here so he's not uh, too close to the other friend there. So I'm getting attacked for three magical damage. And to defend, you look at all of your items and the thing on the left with a shield is physical defense. So if I got attacked right now with physical, none of my weapons help me with physical, um, I would get one blue. Blue is better than black, orange is better than blue. So I get one physical die of defense, but against magic, my pyromancer guard gives me two black dice of defense. So I've got two dice to defend against here. And you roll the dice, the black one has some misses, some ones and some twos. If you're attacking with black dice, that's how much damage you deal. If you're defending, that's how much you block. So like if I rolled this three swords, when he's attacking me for three, I would block all his damage. But additionally, my Pyromancer Guard gives me a single dodge die. And remember, both these enemies have a one dodge difficulty. This has a 50-50 chance of rolling a dodge symbol. If I do, I avoid the attack entirely. And this is a big change from the original rules of the game. You would have to pick either or in the original rules. So if you tried to dodge, you would take a ton of damage if you failed. But now you get to roll everything and you just take the better result. So if you dodge, then you dodge it. If you don't dodge, then you still get your armor, which I think thematically makes sense in Dark Souls uh, trying to roll out of the way it doesn't suddenly mean that like your plate mail doesn't exist anymore but it does make the game a little bit more dodge focused and easy which might be good or bad based on your taste. All right so three damage I'm coming and I did dodge so the fact that I blocked two of the three doesn't matter. Now in the old rules you would have to spend a stamina when you dodged in the new rules you don't have to but you can spend a stamina to let you move one. Now here it doesn't really matter because I'm actually within range of both guys but I could use that if I wanted. 
That's the end of the enemy turn, so now it comes around to my turn. At the beginning of my turn, I would first get rid of up to three stamina on the left side of my track here. I don't have any right now, but you do get some recovery every turn. I would also take the aggro token if there were multiple uh, heroes in play, but there aren't. And I can also freely swap things for my backup, so like if I wanted to have my hand axe instead of my shield, I could do that. And actually, do I want to do that? You know, I think I do, because I have a better time guarding against the crossbow guy. I'm going to try to kill the sword person right now. Okay, then for my turn, I can move and take an action or take an action and then move. So I can't split it up. You get one free movement point and then you can take stamina to do as many extra movements as you like. In this case, I am going to use my free movement to go where the hollow soldier is. Remember, they've got one defense of each type plus the heart. So I just got to do two hits with a single attack. So I'm going to take uh, the three stamina I can for free to try to do a two dice attack with my hand axe. So to show you kind of similar to the enemies, I have zero range. These are the statistics that I need to wield this, which is nothing. <laughs> and then these are attack options. That's the defense stuff you already saw. And this is number of upgrades you can apply to it, which is zero for starting items. So for zero stamina, I can do a one dice attack. For three stamina, I can do a two dice attack. And I have to get through his armor. So I think a two is a better chance here. All right. And OK, that's more than I needed. Thanks. So he is defeated, which is a one soul member for the reward at the end. And then I'm not done because since I have two weapons in hand, I can attack with the other one. I'm going to try to shoot that dude because my pyromancy flame can attack up to two spaces away. So the crossbow hollow has zero magical defense, and I really don't want to spend four more <laughs> stamina. So I'm just going to do a basic attack. The yellow here shows that it is a magical attack, so it applies to their resistance instead of their uh, defense. And I'm going to roll a single die. If I can get at least one hit, he's dead since he has nothing to defend with. Hey, there we go. Get out of here. All right, so that was a lovely first turn. Now some things happen at the end of my turn. First of all, this little boar moves one towards me. If he moves into my space, he would push me and he would apply the stagger condition to me. This little one here, which would mean uh, the next time I attack, I'd have to spend one more stamina than usual and then it would go away. And also importantly, at the end of each player turn, you advance the timer one if the scenario cares about the timer which this one does for multiple reasons. I have to survive player count plus two turns, which is three, and I uh, need to respawn all the enemies after two. So in a moment, those enemies are going to come back. So since everyone's dead, there's no enemy turn. It's going to come back to my turn, and I recover my three stamina. This, by the way, is another big change. This one that I do not like at all <laughs> from the original game I had. In the original game, you would put cubes of different colors in slots like this. You'd also put cubes in your tracking slots. And now they want you to, these like were actually what was punched out of these things. So like I punched out these exact tokens I'm holding out of these holes. And then they want you to like put them back in. I don't do that because then they're really hard to get out. I just kind of like lay them over top, which looks a little bit ugly. And instead of different colors, it's like the different flipped faces show whether it's damage or stamina. And then when you level up, look, look at this fun. Okay, let's say I leveled up Faith. Now the 14 becomes the shadowy side and the 19 becomes the yellow side. Yes, it is pretty easy to read once you've done it, but it's definitely a little bit annoying to actually do. So uh, <laughs> if you get these newer versions instead of the oldest version, maybe invest in some cubes. You don't have to deal with all this. Although, actually, the annoying thing is the cubes wouldn't even help here because in the old version, I think they had the numbers next to the cubes. But here, if you like push out the numbers and just have the cubes, you won't actually know what your strength and dexterity intelligence are because, again, like the items are checking if you have at least 12 intelligence and i have 14 intelligence so yeah a little bit of a, a nitpick there the only change i think i'm going to mention that i'm 100 percent not in favor of i guess cubes were too expensive <laughs> i don't know but uh yeah let's uh get to my turn so a couple things to consider here they're about to spawn again sword guy's gonna go there so i want to be at least two away from him so he can't run up and stab me crossbow will be there who cares and then uh the do, 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 do the thing here remember i can look at it to flip a card and put it on the bottom of its deck so i'm gonna use my free move for that i'm gonna use my action to read the message so i can look at the top card of any deck when i read the message i'm gonna do the treasure deck and i can put it on the bottom if i don't like it what is this notched whip <laughs> okay so this it's a pretty nasty weapon. It applies bleeding. It means the next time they would take damage, they would take two more damage. But here's the rub, y'all. 33 dexterity, which is beyond my particular class's ability to ever achieve. The highest they can get is 27. So that's definitely going on the bottom. <laughs> Glad that I uh, read the message about that one. Oh, crud. The stupid board's going to get me. Hmm. You know what? I'll spend one stamina then to run whenever you are moving. 
you can move as many extra spaces as you want by spending a stamina each. So sorry, I would have spent two stamina to go there, then use my action to read it uh, because I'll get all my stamina back in a second anyway. So end of my turn, Boar comes over. Timer advances, I got to survive one more turn. And our friends are back. And speaking of them being back, it is their turn. So Hollow Soldier, you can't walk through the gravestones, by the way. So one, two, three, one, two, three. Either one is equidistant. I'll have a move over here so I can try to get the double kill again. And then crossbow, dude. That's the only space that's farther away. That's really far away. Um, he's going to shoot at me again. Three potential magical damage. Oh, that sucked. I did not dodge. And I only blocked one of the three. So I take two damage. All right. Well, that's it for them. And this is going to be the last turn because I only had to survive for three turns. So let's try to kill them both and get an extra soul for myself. I'm going to go one free move, two run for one stamina. Oh, and I recovered my stamina from before at the start of the turn. And then I will do the same thing I did last time. Remember, the Sword Hollow has one. De That's enough. He had one defense, so I killed him. And then I will spend four stamina. That would fully fill my bar to do two dice against the crossbow. And he has zero defense and one life, so that kills him too. And there's another minor rules change just to make things a bit easier. In the old rules, once your bar was filled, you would die and go back to the thing and like drop all your souls. Now it's only if you would go one beyond, so I'm totally safe here. All right, so dead, dead, move, and we survive for three turns. That is the end of that. So we get our rewards. One soul per enemy killed. That was four. These are souls. We can level up when we go back to the bonfire, when we choose to stop advancing and then have to repeat everything. Uh, not going to stop yet, clearly. And then I also get a treasure card and an event card. Treasure first. Hopefully it's not. Ooh, ooh it's a, a fiery fire thing. It's a two range. This is a card that is unique to my class. So it would not be in the deck. That's what that symbol means. It takes up one hand slot. I would need 22 strength and 26 intelligence. Oof, that's expensive. So to level up from base to tier one is two souls. From tier one to tier two is four souls. From tier two to tier three is eight souls. So to get to the 22 strength and the 26 intelligence, I would need two, four, eight, 12 souls. I'm at four. <laughs> so not there yet, but what would it do? Hmm. So for zero stamina, I could do a magical attack with a blue die instead of black. That's definitely better. And pushes them. Uh, that'd be good to like get them out of attack range from me. And then for the same four, it's two blue dice instead of black. And also pushing, although this one does have the advantage that this symbol means that it hits everybody in the space. So if you can like double them up, then you can get a lot of utility out of that. But yes, that's actually a great item to have. Now it goes into what's called our inventory. Between encounters, I can switch stuff out if I wanted to have this here which clearly I don't because I literally can't equip it. <laughs> and then uh, also when you go back to the bonfire, you can switch things out. That's another change. I think you couldn't get stuff from the inventory until you went to the bonfire. Uh, so now you're a little bit more flexible in like changing equipment to match the encounter. Then let's get to draw an event. These could be helpful or hurtful. Life gem. During the next encounter, this character heals one damage at the start of each of their turns. At the end of the next encounter, discard this card. I wish it was a harder encounter than a level one, but <laughs> that's cool. So yeah, I can just put that there to remind you. Oh, and also I'll put this here because now every time I come and go back to the bonfire and come through here, I'll go there. Unless I unlock a shortcut, some cards will give you a shortcut so you can just teleport straight to them. Although then you miss out on the chance to get souls. And also, again, when I defeat the mini boss, I will now start from him and these will never be seen again. Oh, and I forgot the most important thing, which is getting my stuff back. And let's try another encounter. We followed the light of the life gem to encounter number two which was either a shattered keep or an illusionary doorway. So both these have the kill all enemies objective. This one gets me four souls. This one gets me two. Blah. So it gets me an event, which can be good. This one reflushes my luck token, which lets me reroll a single die. And the first time I go there, I will automatically get the poison throwing knives, which doesn't really sound like my jam. <laughs> um, this one, oh gosh, so this one is a double room. The first room has a crossbow and a silver sword guy. They also have uh, only one life, but they can move fast and hit you pretty hard. Also has a barrel, which can get you extra souls. Ooh, and it has a treasure chest, but two silver people. And then the illusion part means that these five highlighted uh, circles are going to have trap tokens placed on them. One of the five traps will be a doorway. That's how I advance to the second thing. And the other four could be nothing or could be traps. So I might be taking like extra damage going in there. But yeah, four souls versus two is a lot. I don't really care about the uh, poison throwing knives. 
And geez, there's three cross people right off the bat, and all of them do poison damage to me, which would make me take, I think it's one damage at the start of my turn, and then it goes away. Especially with my life gem, I think the illusionary doorway is the way to go. So this is going to be a double tile setup, but the first one is like something I teleport to with the door, so it's not connected, and the enemies won't like activate on a separate tile until you move in anyway, so that shouldn't be too bad. All right, so here we go, a random tile for our first spot. And we got crossbow on the sword. Oh, great. <laughs> Silver sword person right up here by where I am. So I won't be able to possibly avoid them on the first turn. And then there's a barrel on the star. I think barrels change in the new rules. I don't think this is how they worked before. Or maybe they weren't even in the old game. But uh, the key thing is if anything moves into them, they break. And if you finish the encounter without them breaking, you get plus one soul. So this is actually a five soul encounter for me if everything goes well. All right, now that illusion trap thing, I've taken four random traps. Some of these are nothing. Some of them are going to hurt me. I'll flip them over when I move on to them. They never hurt enemies. And then this fifth one is the doorway, which will lead to the other thing. Oh, man, wait. Oh, this is stupid. So hopefully that's not the door, because that would force me to, uh, <laughs> to break the barrel. Whoops, you know what? I messed up. I just looked back at the rules, and actually with illusion, the four other ones have to be damage dealers. I'm curious. Okay, so two of them weren't out there. Let me get some other damage dealers and shuffle these up and do that again. I'm going to show you the Silver Knight Swordsman because he's about to kick my butt. Oh, I'm going to start uh, here, by the way. And I'm certainly... <laughs> sorry, I meant to say this. Of course, I'm going to have my sh uh, shield equipped to start out since I can freely change it at the beginning of my turn anyway. Yeah, so they can move two towards you. They attack for five. They attack everyone in that node if, like, other heroes were there. They push you afterwards uh, to an adjacent space. They have a two dodge difficulty, which means I can't possibly dodge. Five attack. They have two physical defense, only one magic defense, and only one heart. So they are pretty easy to kill once you uh, get them <laughs> going down. But, uh, yeah. So he's got higher threat. He's going to go raw and fall over and die immediately. Now he's going to come and attack me. Since this is a physical attack, I'm using my single blue physical defense from my shield and a block two of five which means i took three damage off the bat now remember i could have rolled my dodge die i technically should have but since he has a dodge difficulty of two it could not have possibly helped and then he pushes me we'll go there uh the push i think in the original dark souls you can just move wherever now, if they are like in a different space, it specifies that it has to increase the distance from them. If they're in your space, it's still, as far as I understand, wherever the heck you want. Okay, and then this guy, let's go over here, why don't you? Wants to increase the range, he's going to shoot at me. This is that same three magic attack we know and love. Ah, oh, man, I didn't dodge. Okay, so I take uh, one damage out of the three. Feeling good, feeling good. <laughs> and there's a whole other room after this. I think I'm going to have to use my SS flask this time. All right, now it's my turn. And yeah, okay, that's what I thought. Uh, if I can get to this guy's space and do a double attack on him, the Silver Knight can't possibly reach me. So let's do that. I'll start out the turn by switching to my Hand Axe Pyro Flame combo. And then I'm going to move two, taking one stamina. Go one, two. Don't want to move out of the trap just yet. And these are the guys with no magic defense. So I'll use the basic zero stamina cost flame attack first. If that doesn't hit, I can... Uh, choose whether I want to spend three stamina or not for the better hand axe attack. I right, need one damage. That's it. Cool. So uh, that's that. He activates again and goes, uh, I guess I can pick. Let's go right there so I can do a double attack on him. Now I recover my stamina. I'll move into his space. And then, huh, I don't have enough spaces left to do the powerful version of both attacks, but he has cruddier magic defense. So let's just go for broke and do four stamina. And roll two black dice. The area effect doesn't matter. You can never hurt yourself with area effect. And it's actually the same as fighting the uh, hollow soldiers. That's got to get two successes here. And whoa, let's use our luck token. We can reroll a single die. And there we go. That'll do it. <laughs> Thank God. So he's gone. Now, important to note, this will often happen. There is usually not a timer in scenarios. So once everyone's dead, I just say, hey, time is relative and get rid of all my stamina because I could take a billion turns <laughs> of nothing happening. But then I got to actually start checking where the door is. So, hey, trap number one, what you got for me? So this is I roll just the dodge die. Armor doesn't help. And if I succeed, then I take nothing. If I fail, I take one damage. That was a more annoying set of rooms than I realized. Whoops, there's one damage. Maybe I should have uh, picked the other encounter. Okay, no door there. That, uh, by the way, goes away. Let's do this one. Oh, man. One dodge or two damage. No more luck. Re hey, there we go. Nothing. That was great. Okay, and then hey, let's go here. Okay, it's another one or one. If it's under the barrel, I'm going to be so pissed off. I took another damage. Ugh. 
Okay, and then what do we got? You bastard. Okay, well, I can't even possibly dodge two. So I take another damage. <sighs> so that means that the secret door was under the barrel the whole time, and I have to smash it. Thanks, Dark Souls. That does seem to match uh, from software's <laughs> malicious design sometimes. Okay, so bloop. Yep, there it is. So it does say that I immediately teleport to the new tile. It doesn't say that I lose my action, so I think I should still be able to attack. And more importantly, if it's still my turn, I can uh, still use my Estus stuff. Oh, I didn't equip my shield. Well, I mean, I had infinite time, right? So I clearly would have done that. Yeah, that's better. So I should be able to teleport in, maybe flame something, and then use my SS Flask to heal before I get mobbed. And then I can go to any doorway node I want. Oh, those are the archers. Hmm. Ooh, never mind. I love the archers. Look at that. They uh, do less damage, <laughs> and they have no magical defense, and they still only have one life. So yeah, here's what I'm definitely going to do then. If I still get my action, again, I don't really know. The rules don't make it 100% clear. I'm going to use my SS Flask. Maybe I'll go back to base after this. Heal, heal, heal. So that I have one, three, four, enough stamina to do the area of effect attack, targeting this whole node. So one hit of damage will kill the hard guy. I need two to kill the hollow soldier. And, ah, uh, my gosh. Bad rolling, what? Okay, that's fine. <laughs> so now uh, that's it for my turn. They're going to activate. The hollow soldier charges in, attacks me for four physical. This is dodgeable, and I got, the oh, cool. So I dodge. Uh, I'm not going to spend a stamina to move. The great bow person can attack me no matter what. So they're going to shoot first and then move away. And, oh, they actually only have one dodge. That's cool, and only four. So same attack. Take two damage. And move one away from me. Hmm. All right, so that makes it my turn again. I think I have a plan here. If I run up and chase the bow guy, the other person can't even reach me. So that'll take three movement. Oh, yeah, I'm going to switch my hand axe. Okay, so three movement means I got to spend two extra stamina. I'm going one, two, three. I'll try out my free pyromancy attack. So all I need is one hit, and they have no defense. And again, if that doesn't go well, I will reevaluate. There we go. And now, Wonder of Wonders, the chest is ready for me to open. That's another one you can't move on to, but you can uh, use an action if you're adjacent. Okay, so this guy charges at me. It's my turn. I don't want to kill him yet, because if I do, the encounter ends, and I don't think I get to open the tre treasure chest anymore, for whatever reason. <laughs> so I'll heal my stamina. I'll use my action to open it. What do I get? Great Swamp Ring. 15 Dexterity. I need two level ups again. 20 Intelligence. I only need one level up. When you use explosive firepower, instead of gaining a black die, gain a blue die. Oh, that's my uh, once per delve hero ability. It means that my next magic attack gets an extra black die. So, I mean, that is that is something. Oh, it has to go on armor that has a slot for it, which I don't even have right now. So, I mean, I don't mind having it. It is an item that I would like to equip eventually, but no hurry there. And then this guy moves in again, and I'll do my little... Double attack combo. And yeah, I do have enough stamina to just go ham here. So I'll do four for the super magic attack first. I need two to get past his armor. Yay! All right, so I had to use my Estus Flask because of the traps. But let's see what I got. So four souls and an event card. Oh, uh, no, that's right. I destroyed the stupid barrel. So just four souls, not five. It gets me to eight total, which is not enough to build up to that new fire ability. Oh, God, I forgot about the stupid life gem. Yeah, I wonder if I would have had to use my Estus. Oh, no, of course I wouldn't have had to use my Estus Flask because I could have literally just spammed turns uh, every time I took a trap because I had infinite turns. So, yeah, hold on. I'm giving myself that back because literally I would not have been hurt at all when I went through the doorway. But that's gone. I won't have that again. And let's see what my new one is. Forgotten Supplies. Choose a character. That character flips all their character tokens to the ready face. Oh, man. I guess I would have had my Estus Flask back either way. It's pretty cool. Well, I was thinking about potentially heading back, but no, nah, I'm definitely going to do another level one if I got my flask left. Let's see what we got. Undead Sanctum. This does not seem like one I want to do. <laughs> so it does have a reward of four souls, and I get, the first time I do it, the Silver Knight Straight Sword, which I'm sure is lovely. But it's got the Onslaught and Gang Rules. Onslaught means both these tiles start active. So all three of these melee dudes will be charging at me off the bat. And then Gang means that whenever a hollow person attacks, the basic enemies... Uh, for each other, I think it's if they have at least one other hollow or for each other hollow within one, they get plus one attack and plus one dodge difficulty. And there's traps all over the second tile. I mean, I just don't think so. Let's see if the other one is better. Oh, God, this isn't necessarily better either. Tempting Maw. Okay, so this one is three souls. But if I defeat the trial, which is like a bonus, then six souls and two treasure cards. Whoa. What does the trial require? 
Okay, so trial. Kill the Mimic. The character opens the chest. Instead of drawing a card from the treasure deck, reset the timer and replace the chest token with the Mimic model. And so I have to kill all enemies within four turns. The Mimic does not count as an enemy if the chest hasn't been opened. So I can kill three enemies, then run up, open the chest. The Mimic has five life. He is not a pushover. But six souls and two treasure cards is kind of crazy. Like, I can't say no to that, right? Uh, all right. All right, here we go. All right, what a fabulous throw rug you have, invaders. Uh, let's see what we're fighting here. Oh, good. It's another silver sword great bow. I like them. And then a basic sword guy. And then over here, a crossbow and sword guy. All right, so cool. I should only be taking range attacks at first. And then the uh, quote unquote treasure chest is chilling right over here. So I'll clearly be coming in there because <laughs> I don't want the uh, sword people to reach me. And I'll also clearly not uh, have my shield off at the beginning of the battle. All right, so activation order. We've seen all these people before is hollow a soldier, then great bowman, then crossbow. And just to show you our friend, the mimic, one range, charges at you two, six damage and pushes you, two dodge difficulty, five life, one defense for both. Uh, maybe I don't want to open it. <laughs> All right, so anyway, uh, sword, sword, <laughs> and then the great bow shoots me, or tries to, hopefully they miss, yay! <laughs> okay, and then I'm not going to move, and then the crossbow shoots me, oh, that's right, the great bow will move away, ah, oh, man, I take two damage, now, let's see, the crossbow, can he get farther away, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, yeah, okay, so we go there, he can't move in the chest, and then the great bow, after he shoots, moves back, so one, two, one, two, three, yeah. All right, everybody's doubled up, sadly. And yeah, plan is to kill everybody except like one of those guys, try to fully recover by just kiting around him, and then maybe say hi to the Mimic. All right, so to get away from these dudes, <laughs> well, first, I, I am going to equip my hand axe, because if I can kill the great bow, then the only person who will be hitting me is uh, this guy with magical attack, so I don't need the shield. And then I'll go one, two, three, so that's two extra stamina. Okay, and then which one is the good kill? Oh, he has no magic defense. So I'll do a basic magic attack for no stamina first. Although, ooh, if I did... Hmm, if I killed him with a melee attack... But no, he's got two melee defense. I don't think I would succeed. Okay, yeah, so basic magic. Good, got him. And then I can't do anything with my axe because I'm not in range. All right, so I can have them go either way. They'll be closer, so let's uh, <laughs> have them be a little dumb about it. There we go. And the archer is going to, oh, I guess, move there. Ooh, cool, I can double kill. But then not so kill is him trying to shoot me. Gosh darn it. Use my luck re Yeah, you know what? I'm going to use my luck reroll on the dodge here. Hey, great. <laughs> so not two more damage. Because the Mimic's already going to kick my butt enough. I don't want to be dying ahead of that. All right, so my turn. Um, Still shouldn't be getting stabbed by anybody. So let's undo those. And let's move. I guess here is good enough. Unless I just roll terrible. Uh, but let's see how it goes. Gonna do my super flame that hits everybody with two dice. Hopefully we win. Yay, that's enough for both. It's the end of my turn. He goes here. I can literally stay away from him for a little bit. So let's just pretend that I <laughs> took a whole turn to heal up. Just kiting that way. And then he would charge again. Oh, that's right. I gotta actually open the treasure chest, don't I? Well, here, that'll be easy because I'll use my action to open it. To become a mimic. Hi. He can move two and then attack at range one. Oh, I can't really dodge away from him, can I? Yeah, even then he can still get me. Well, that being the case, then I'll just one away so the hollow soldier can't get me up. All right, and the hollow soldier does activate before the mimic. I'll just move here. And then the mimic moves two towards me. So he gets right in my spot. And then he attacks me with six undodgeable physical attack. Uh, oh, God. Let's say that I switched my shield. Sorry. I gotta remember to do these things. Uh, six unblockable or undodgeable physical attack. Can I possibly beat this guy? Hold on a second. Let me reevaluate whether I should even be doing this. The most I can block each time he attacks me is three. But more likely it'll be two on average. So I'm gonna take four damage each time he attacks me. I got my Estus Flask. If I roll really well with one of my super attacks, which uses up like all my stamina, then I could do four damage. Oh, I can use my... My hero power. Okay, well, let's try it. I just really hope he doesn't go crazy on this first attack. Okay, two. I think I can deal with that. Yeah, actually, that's perfect. Okay, so that's four <laughs> damage. And he does have a pushing attack, which I'll just use to get farther away from the guy I don't want to be near. All right, so here's my <laughs> Hail Mary turn. One, two, three, four stamina. I am also using my power. So I'm doing a two, three black dice magic attack. He has one resistance to magic and five life. So if I can get six, which is unlikely, then he's dead. Four. So he's taking three damage. I, I can do that. 
Here's a little thing you keep track of when uh, they're not a boss, because the bosses have dials, but <laughs> they have more than one life. And clearly, I'll use my Estus Flask, because otherwise I would be dead. All right, so if I can get two more damage on him with a weaker attack next turn, I can survive. And I'm not going to move, because it's not much point. So this guy goes here. He charges to me. Attacks me again. Oh, God, what is that, five? Oh, it's fine. Oh, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Okay, well, I mean, it's all or nothing, right? So I'm going to go ahead and switch my hand axe because then I could uh, get a little second chance. I'm going to do a four stamina. Um, well, actually, no, I'll do a three stamina hand axe attack first because it's a little bit cheaper. Why not? Oh, wait, I got pushed. So never mind. I don't want to do the hand axe. I want to uh, keep my shield equipped and do the spell for four stamina. But if I can get at least three here to finish him off, I think I am just freaking go, okay? Do, do, do you die? Definitely not going to do this uh, optional part of the encounter again until I get better items. And then he moves towards me, and what, I can just blast him, right? Yeah, blast him and then keep on moving away if I fail, so I get three stamina back. I'll do my super blast on him. That's enough. Okay, yay! So I use my luck, my Estus Flask, my uh, hero power, literally everything, but I'm getting six souls and two treasures. Yes. Raw gem. This is a weapon upgrade. I don't have any weapons that can hold that yet. Weapon gains plus two damage, but costs plus two stamina. Um, and then a reinforced club. I would need hmm, leveled up strength for that. It is only one hand. Eh, it hits pretty hard. I would need uh, I need to level up faith as well. It's got no defense bonuses. But it would be a better accompaniment to the axe. So like fire surge plus reinforced club would be a great thing to switch back and forth with. And I need the same strength leveling up for both of them, but I would have to split other things. Okay, that's cool. So with that, I'm definitely going to go back to the bonfire to level up. I get all my tokens back and I lose one spark. If you go, whoops, the wrong direction. If you go back to the bonfire when you have zero sparks left, then you lose. That's usually from being defeated. But uh, this is your basically like number of times you can rest and level up. Now, several things happen. A big one is that you get a chance to buy some stuff. Great combustion, worker armor, heal, and an ember. So this is another bigger change and a very good one. <laughs> this one I have no problems with from the original rules. In the original rules, it was a totally blind option. You could spend one soul at a time to draw the top card of the deck which might be completely useless to you. It was more likely to be useful if you were playing with more players, of course, and you could divide them up among the classes. But uh, yeah, now you get an option of four items, and you can buy or not buy them as you choose, one soul at a time. And then the rest of them get discarded. So if there's items that like aren't working for you or you don't need for your character, they aren't going to uh, muck things up at all. So yeah, let's see now. Great Combustion or Fire Surge. Uh, Great Combustion. They have similar requirements. And they do similar damage. Oh, okay. Great Combustion always hits everyone. That's that little uh, circular symbol there. Whereas this one has the pushing and one orange versus two blue. Orange is the best. Oh, and it's cheaper. Yeah, so these are kind of similar, but I already have Fire Surge for free, which makes me think maybe I don't need Great Combustion. As for the worker armor, uh, it's a little better than my current armor. The main thing is it's got two upgrade slots. Uh, so it's a little bit weaker against magic, but better against physical, exact same dodging. So not great, but maybe worth getting. How about heal? So for zero stamina, one character within range gains one stamina, one health. Ooh, healing. That's pretty cool. Especially, uh, I mean, you kind of saw it. You have lots of chances often where, like, nothing is happening. So I could just literally sit and spam heal until I'm fully healed. One character within range gains four health. Wow, that's good. So I need 23 faith. I mean, leveling faith up twice. But didn't I have another thing? The reinforced club, I need to level faith up once. I wouldn't be too far away. I might at least buy that. Again, it's only one soul. And I have, what did I get? 14 souls. Now, if I wanted to level up to be able to use the club or the fire surge... I need to level strength twice, which is six, and either it was, uh, yeah, faith twice, or in, oh no, faith once, or intelligence twice. So that'd be 12. So I could afford to level up to use the club and buy several things, or the fire surge and buy two things. And they are very similar. By the way, the last thing is an ember. When you buy it, you get an ember token. And what that'll do is anytime an effect would cause you three or more damage, you take one less damage. And that happens over and over again every time you would take that much damage until you actually die. Then you lose the ember. Okay, I think I might buy these two for two souls 
and that'll leave me enough to level up to get my better fire spell equipped. And these stay in my inventory with everything else. Uh, when I set out and then in between encounters, I can switch things up and I can have up to two items in my backup. Um, and there's no like selling of items or anything. Okay, so I was going to level up for fire surge. All right, so strength and intelligence will both be up to in every soul I have. All right, so there we go. Falling out a bit. Uh, I do not love this <laughs> system of doing things. So I'll definitely replace the Pyromancer Flame with the Fire Surge. Although I think I can leave it, right, if I have two slots, because it still does give me a way to do area of effect. And then I want the heal. Oh, wait, hold on. Uh, I guess I can't bring everything. So I could equip the Raw Gem to nothing. Never mind. Spells don't have any upgrade sw spots. I have enough Intelligence for the Great Swamp Ring, but I need two Dexterity, so I can't equip that. I don't have enough Faith for the Reinforced Club. Okay, so... And yeah, I can't do worker armor until I level up dexterity. All right, that's fine. So yeah, I got to decide, do I want to bring the hand axe or the pyromancy flame? Well, I guess, I guess I could still, yeah, I could still do a double attack like that if I want to. So let's bring all spells and no weapons for the moment. All right, with that, we'd be ready to go into battle again. And that brings us to the interesting <laughs> reality of the Dark Souls experience. And this part has not really changed because I would fight these guys again. Then I would fight these guys again. Then I would fight these guys again. Now, what is different is that the boards change. So you don't have the exact same setup, the exact same position of things. And also a big difference is that often they have like different ways to earn different amounts of souls. Whereas in the old one, you'd always get the same amount of souls. So like this one, you know, yes, I would have to play it again, but maybe I wouldn't be able to kill all the enemies uh, like I did last time. So maybe I'd only get two or three souls instead of four. And then this one, well, since I have the healing spell, the illusion doesn't really matter. But like the traps might be in a different place. And maybe I wouldn't be able to get the treasure chest before I fought all of them. And then this one, you know, maybe I wouldn't want to fight the mimic again based on where he was located in the room. But really what an issue was in the original version of the rules, at least for me, and that is not really changed by this, is what it really comes down to is do you need to use these things or not? If you can beat a room without using your Estus Flask, then it's kind of a room that doesn't matter because you can consistently beat it. And I don't think any of these now with my upgrades would probably be like too challenging. I can certainly do a good bit more damage to, uh, you know, the mimic, for example, or to skip him. So, yeah, there is that repetitiveness to the game. But like I said, I think the new objectives and changing uh, layout of the room helps a little bit with that. But hey, let's uh, see how repetitive it feels and try speedrunning a few of these rooms again. So here we go, our old friends, the sword and crossbow respawning people. Crossbow shoots at me, my defense is identical, and I dodge. Ooh, I would have blocked anyway. I'm not as real as I should have been taking uh, the dodge rolls for one stamina, because then I would recover the one stamina. So sure, I'll go right here for my uh, free dodge move. Then I recover at the start of my turn. Uh, and yep, and let's double up our attacking options. I use the four stamina, two black on the one with one defense against magic. Oh, that was still enough. Then I'll use my new single blue one. I don't think this can miss, and this guy has no defense against magic. Yep, you're dead. And now I can still move since I used the dodge to move before. Okay, and then this guy comes to the call, and that's turn number one. They don't come back yet. My new action, I'll look, and I don't know, the treasure deck again. Ooh, Titanite Shard is actually a good one. I can attach this to a weapon to do plus one damage. That could be the, uh, the mace or club or whatever. So I'll leave that on top. And then I'll, uh, hmm, I'll step one this. No, no, I guess I got to go farther to not get mauled by that dude, don't I? Move one, two. And he chases me. We advance the time two. They come back. And then he goes here. This one. Oh, I forgot to move him away. All right, so this time he moves away. Shoots me again. I take one damage. Recover. And I'll just blast them both again. I can go... Full hog, eight stamina. <laughs> so that means two black on the one with no defense, he's dead. And two blue on the one with one defense, he's dead. And then, I guess, uh, yeah, that's it. I would just have to move. Oh, I don't even know where he is. <laughs> and he would follow there. And that's it. So yeah, four souls again. That one seems like it would always be consistent. Oh, I forgot. I also get a treasure and event. So the treasure we already saw is a titanite shard. I can't attach that to an item. Not that I have an item to attach it to uh, until we're at the fire. What's the event this time? Unhallowed Offering. Each character can flip any number of their player tokens from their ready face to their use face. Add a soul to the soul cache for each token that was flipped. Well, that's kind of cool. I don't think I would want to, <laughs> but it's nice to have the option. All right, now this one, I mean, realistically, is there any way I could get killed? <laughs> because there's no way, like, the one sword guy and the bow guy are going to take me out. 
And then I can, again, fully heal before I search through the traps. Each time I get a trap, I can fully heal. And then only when I get the door will I have to fight. And then, I mean, yeah, it's two archers who I can probably dodge or barely take any damage from. Uh, so, yeah, well, let's just call that one an easy auto win. Get me four souls, another event. Hardy Bonfire Aesthetic. Increase the starting health of all enemies missing counter by one. Ooh, you can apply to the harder one. If the party completes this encounter, they receive a number of extra souls equal to one plus uh, player count plus two, three. Okay, well, that makes it a little bit more interesting. Let's actually try it out. It's right, so definitely a different setup this time. It's got to be here so I don't get stabbed right away. There, that person will go there. They can't reach me. Uh, the great bow will shoot and then move backwards. Oh, and of course, I'm going to have my uh, shield ready. And dodged it. Nice. And I'll be smart and use my dodge. Move there. And this dude, I guess we can go there. And <laughs> took the damage again. And I might as well dodge roll again. So I heal fully. And yeah, let's, uh, let's get my double attack ready. I'll try to take out both archers and just stay away from the sword people. Should be easy enough. Um, let's go and do the... They, they have no... That's right. Neither of them have any defense against magic. But they both have two life now. Definitely more worried about him. He can actually hurt me if he hits. So, well, I can do both attacks on him if necessary. Okay, so let's do fire surge on him first. Oh, wait a second, wait a second. I need to move first, so I'm in range. There we go. Then if I kill him with a fire surge, I can do the other pyromancy flame on that guy. All right, so basic pyre, fire storm. Oop, I did only get one damage. And then I'll go for the basic pyromancy flame against the same guy. Oh my god, all right, I'll use my luck token, I guess. I don't want to get shot. Okay, good, so he's dead. Okay, then. Oh, no, charge, charge. I could just kill them all. Oh, that's right, if I kill them, then the scenario ends. Uh, this guy can't get any farther away, but he'll shoot at me. And blocked it all, but no dodge. Right, so I'll move here and do the fire surge. Automatic kill. Yep. Oh, and then, you know, I can do the f uh, basic Pyromancy Flame, and I won't hit both of them. Of course, I also probably won't kill them since... Uh, oh, never mind. <laughs> and then here, I'll have them split up. Okay, then I can use a Stamina and move there. And I can use my Fire Surge first. That does one damage with their defense. And then with the hate, hey, spend four Stamina and do the more powerful... There we go, that kills him. Okay, he comes here. I'll kite over there. He comes here. That would get rid of all my stamina at that point. And once again, there's no way to dodge the mimic, so I'll go ahead and open it. He's going to be able to reach me. Let's switch to my shield. And I'll move down here. So this guy goes first, and then the mimic moves twice. Still can't dodge his attack. It's still six, so I take four. Now, you know, I just realized if I'd been smart, I would have... Uh, Equip the heal and get rid of the one damage I had from the previous attacks. Yeah, you oh, that's right. I should also be pushing people with fire surge. I totally forgot about that. All right, so I'll let him push me there. Now I could move far enough away. Uh, one, two. Then you have to go. No, that's not far. One, two, three. He would not be able to reach me for his attack. So yeah, with that in mind, let's try this. Switch in heal. And first I'll attack with fire surge and heal myself. And let's see if we can get any damage past his resistance. Okay, so that's one. That just brings him down to the normal five he should have. Okay, and then I'll spend three stamina to heal four. Powered up version of heal. And then two more stamina to run extra. Three over to there. Here, here, hey, they're together. Actually, no, yeah, I'm worried that he's going to kill me if I don't have the shield, so let's have that equipped. But I will go for the big attack with the fire surge. Whoa, five minus one, four. Ah, he's still got one hit point left because of the increased life. And I get to push him, but yeah, I can't get him far enough away to actually dodge him. So I might as well stay where I am. Oh, and then, ooh, I think I need to use my Estus Flask. Okay, so here we go. Oh man, if I'd done the stupid uh, thing. I guess if I don't need the SS Flask, there's a very good chance. In fact, I would have to roll a three defense or he would defeat me, even with the shield equipped. He comes here, he comes here and attacks me. And yep, I would have taken four damage and died. Oh, that's right, he pushes me. I don't think you go at all. Or do you go along the wall? I don't think so. All right, well then I'd send four stamina to do the group attack. And hey, that would kill them both. Yay! All right, so again, you can see how sometimes the new version like spices things up. This certainly made it a tougher battle. So now I'm getting six, nine souls, and two treasure cards. Beautiful. Let's see. East-West Shield. Oh, that's great. Intelligence Shield. Oh, and it's so it's definitely... Oh, okay. Oh, my gosh. Wait, wait. Hold on. It is so much better. Look, y'all. An extra dodge die. Whoa. And I can use it already, so... Heck yeah, in between encounters, I will <laughs> definitely equip that. And then what's this? Force. Oh, it just pushes people? Nah, I don't see a need for that. But having this stuff makes me way more survivable. 
Now I'm ridiculously good. Oh, actually, it is a little worse against physical. In fact, my physical defense is kind of crud now because I went from a blue die to a black. But having a crazy number of dice for magic attacks and having two dodge dice is really pretty great. Well, with that, I think we can take a level two, don't you? Let's see our options. Deathly Tolls. Okay, survive for four turns. Reward, I get two souls plus one for every enemy killed. It's kind of like the other one. I get an event. And I, oh, I get an ember, the thing that uh, prevents extra damage. Oh, but this is Onslaught, and there's a Mimic, and the gang thing. <laughs> and there's like a billion enemies, that seems bad. Uh, how about this one, the Fountainhead. Okay, it's this one space, kill all enemies. Five souls. Oh, and it becomes a shortcut, which means I wouldn't have to play the other things. Although, I really, I don't think any of these could hurt me. The Tempting Maul was only dangerous because I went after the Mimic. And this has gang. At the end of each enemy turn, each enemy moves one node away from the closest character. Wait, that's interesting. The sword people will like kind of never reach me. This means there are traps on every space except like the ones with terrain and stuff. And there's a thing. Well, either way, this one just seems too scary. So <laughs> let's go for that. So here's all of our friends. Oh, there's no way for me to dodge. Most of this, well, I can get away from those two. And yeah, traps everywhere. This is how the trap things look. There's a single little thing. Roar, roar, roar. Oh, that's right, I only have one physical defense now. I gotta hope for the uh, the dodge. Got it. And yeah, I'll definitely dodge roll into here. And then uh, this crossbow guy can't get any farther away. This one, who can go whichever way I want. Hello, uh, <laughs> area of effect damage. Now he's trying to shoot me for three damage. I don't think that's happening. No, no, it's not. And yeah, geez. It's lined up, aren't they? Let's let's get both of these. <laughs> so I get rid of my one stamina. I'll do the more powerful area of effect one here. Targeting all our friends. All right. Beautiful. I had to get at least two for the sword people with their armor. Okay, and then I'll do the fire surge. Ooh, you know what? I just realized. Gang. That guy would have had one more dodge difficulty. Did I roll two dodges? I honestly don't remember. So let's run it back again. Oh, well, this time I definitely didn't. So that would be, he also has plus one damage. That'd be four damage. And I would not be there. Oh, which would have changed a lot of stuff. Hold on. Because now he couldn't retreat to their space. He could retreat to here. Oh, and that's right. Also, at the end of the enemy turn, each enemy moves one node away from the closest character. So send this guy like to there. These guys to there. Two. I guess this is farther away, isn't it? That seems like where we would have actually been. Definitely worse position to be in. Um, so in that case, I think I would equip this and this to try to to have good dodge if I go into any traps. But mainly to go here and then do the area of effect thing that I did. We'll just keep the same roll and say they both died. So I only need one hit anyway with them not having any armor. All right, then this guy would come in and attack me. Ooh, although actually I can choose the order I resolve them in, so he wouldn't get the gang up bonus if they aren't there yet. Nice, and then I guess I would spend one stamina to go away before they go there. I'd be like this, and yeah, I think I'd do. Oh God, this is dangerous if it doesn't go well. Yeah, actually it was stupid because I wouldn't have anything left to actually run away. So I forget what I just said. That was dumb. That was dumb. Instead, I think I'll run through some traps to get to safety. Go one. Nothing. Two. Nothing. Oh, that was great. Oh, that's right. They keep on... They're supposed to be moving away from me. Okay, I'm forgetting. <laughs> I'm trying to rush things. Okay, so they move, and then they... Which means they're never going to reach me. Okay, so we'll call this battle one, because clearly I could just uh, use my heal spell while they never get to me. <laughs> and get rid of all my stuff anyway. That was pretty uh, interesting for a minute. That would give me five souls and a shortcut. And again, like, I might use the shortcut to alleviate repetition, but I don't see that any of these, except for the one the shortcut is on, would be potentially uh, hazardous to my health at this point. But yeah, let's just say I will go back, and then I think I'll stop the video after leveling up this time, because I've sort of shown what I wanted to show. The, the boss battles are still probably the coolest part of the game, and that's the part of the design that has changed the least. So if you go watch my old video, it's pretty much the same thing. But yeah, I got 10, 19, 22... And then let's see. Silver Knight Straight Sword. 20, 20, 20. Um, gotta need to level up Dexterity and Faith twice, but I could do that. And then pretty good melee attack. Oh my gosh, it adds one to dodge too? <sighs> wow. So I could like really go into any room with three dodge dice ready. That's crazy. And it's got two upgrade spots, so I could put the Titanite shards on it. So it would do two black dice plus two automatic damage each time. Yeah. That's hard to argue with. So that's uh, one, two. Oh, what's this one? Crystal gem. This woman's attack gains plus one black die. Eh, black dice miss. I like automatic damage. And then, I mean, I guess I'd buy the ember too, right? Why not? To prevent some big damage. So it costs three. 
And then I want to level both these up, so that's 12. Which means I got way more than enough for that. Leaving me with 7. Which is actually like the worst number to be at because it costs 8 <laughs> to level everything up. So I can just hang on to these and hope I don't die to lose them. But then, yeah, gosh. What would I bring? So I'd have the guy put... The Titan, I mean, the sword is better than the... Uh, where is it? Reinforced club I got, right? Well, yeah, I mean, just that dodge is so nice. So yeah, so let's say I got the sword... Reinforced with two Titanite shards. And that's another change, by the way, in the game. It used to be that once item uh, upgrades were on a weapon, you could never take them off again, whereas you could take them off of armor. But they changed that now so you can like freely take it off and put it on a new thing whenever you go back to the fire, which I, again, think is a positive change. Like It sucks to <laughs> boost up a weapon that's not that great and then get a better one later. And I would get the Ember, which again prevents a damage from taking three or more. And honestly, I think I would probably switch to the worker armor just to balance out my defenses. And also, I know the Titanite Demon tends to focus more on physical attacks. Oh, and then I could put on the Great Swamp Ring, which would mean when I use my explosive firepower, I'd get plus blue to a magical attack. So yeah, I think this would be my working way of doing things. And then I think I'd keep Fire Surge instead of Pyromancy Flames since I'm about to fight a boss and heal. I mean, that's a pretty solid loadout. I've got two black dice for physical defense, a black and a blue die for magic defense, three dodge, two black dice, plus two automatic damage, great range attack when I need to bring it in. When I want to use my special, that would be three blue. If I like pumped everything into it, I can heal myself. A pretty commanding spot to be in, I think. And I think that'll lead me to one final thought I want to mention. One of the first variants I saw for the game was increasing the number of souls you got, like just getting double souls or whatever, because that would increase the grinding, right? You would have to like play through the same scenarios over and over again because you would need the souls. I think that the way they've ramped up the reward, you just get a number of rewards for each room, regardless of how tough it was, even when you got to like level threes. Now you get way more rewards for better, tougher rooms. And also you saw like kind of what you pick and which places you go to and how you fight in them can earn you more souls. So in my plays, I've easily been able to pretty much level everything up before I get to the final boss. Now, you know, is that good or bad? <laughs> I guess that'll depend a bit on what you want. But for me, it makes the game feel a little bit smoother. Like I can get to the cool items and stuff a little bit faster. So I think it's a good change. And it does reduce, I think, or take away entirely the need to do the like doubled souls and that kind of thing. Because realistically here, even though I could probably replay these three scenarios just to farm souls and get more treasure cards, I wouldn't really need to. I've got great treasure. I'm almost fully leveled up. I could probably just jump straight with the shortcut to the Fountainhead, fight the Titanite Demon. Uh, you know, I could, <laughs> instead of like cheating and sort of fast forwarding through encounters, I could just literally use the shortcut rule and do it legally. Oh, and geez, the other huge change I forgot to mention because it didn't come up because I wasn't playing with two or more characters. One of the things that I hated <laughs> most about the original version, well, not hated, that's too strong, but that I didn't like in the original version was that... If you played with higher player counts, you could just have people getting mobbed and attacked over and over again because it's an enemy turn, then one hero turn. Enemy turn, every enemy, I'm saying, then the next hero. So you would get attacked over and over. So they didn't completely change that, but they did add in at the start of each hero's turn, every other hero can move one for free. And that combined with like easier dodging and stuff. I've only played two hands and I haven't uh, tried a three hero game or a four hero game, but that seems to balance things out a bit so that you can like intelligently move away and support each other and that kind of stuff. Does it completely fix the problem? I'm still not sure I would ever want to play this with four players, but it is another, I think, positive change. So yeah, the summary here is tons of positive changes to this new rule set. I like pretty much everything. Yes, dodging might be a little bit too powerful. Yes, you might level up a little bit too quickly. But dang, that's better than <laughs> the alternative of the old rules. But the game is still grindy. It still can be repetitive. There still can definitely be, when you're powered up a lot, uh, kind of a foregone conclusion battles that you're just going through the paces or the motions to, uh, to finish up. But it is still a fun time. The boss battles can still be great. It is cool to get your character builds together and do awesome stuff with them. So this is uh, the best Dark Souls has ever been, in my opinion. And I'm totally happy to play this version with no house rules, besides maybe skipping an encounter here and there and just saying I got the rewards when I know there's no way I can lose it. So yeah, good job to Steamforged. And excited to see what they're coming up with with Street Masters, now that I've heard that announced. But that's it for some Dark Souls. Hope this uh, shows you a bit of how the rules have changed, I think, for the better. 
Thanks, everybody, for watching. And I'm going to close it out with a big thank you to our highest tier Patreon supporters. That's Minkus, J. Willie MF, Steve Wren, and Pedro Lucas. So grateful to all of you and all our amazing supporters out there. Good gaming, and I'll see you at the next stop.